Hello, beautiful people. It's Celia Musuning Zengele here again. Welcome to this YouTube channel. If you're coming across this YouTube channel for the first time, welcome. If you are a new subscriber and a return sub, welcome to you too. And you are highly appreciated for your time and data that you are spending watching my videos. Um this morning i came across a story that really touched me it touched me so deeply and i felt like i need to share this i came across this story on 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 facebook you can follow me on facebook um with the same name Celia Mutuning Zengele. i talk a lot on facebook as well so one of my friends shared a, a story of a woman in Zimbabwe. Her name is, let me see. You can follow me on Facebook with the same name, Celia Musuning Zengele. I do a lot of talking there. Okay, I came across a story of Mary Mbaiwa. She's a woman um, who is Zimbabwean. Uh, and her story did touch me to a point where I started digging. I started digging. I found myself just getting into the life of this woman because, yo, there was a lot. There was a lot about her story. So I felt like, you know what, There's, there are a lot of lessons to learn in her story. Hence, I felt like I need to share this with you. Uh, it's up to you what you make of this story. I'm just going to say it as it is. Uh, I'm not going to judge at any given time. Um, you be the judge if you want to judge. Or if you just want to take lessons there and there, please do so. Because there are a lot of lessons to be learned in her story. Right. It's Mary Mubaiwa was a model. She was a model. And as a model, she got involved with some rich guy who was a businessman. Okay, Mary was a model when she was younger. And then she got into a relationship with a businessman then. Uh, that businessman's name was Terry Manzi Mandiza. And they had a, their first child. And thereafter, she got married to a footballer a Zimbabwean footballer and uh, the name of that husband was Shingi Kaondera. So, and then uh, she got married to that guy. I can't remember f uh, and from which year until, we, oh, I just remember that in 2010 he, she must have been in a relationship with the, the now of the bill. Okay, then uh, later on, she got married to the Zimbabwean uh, vice president who has now retired. His name is Constantino Chiwenga. Do I say it nicely? Yeah, Constantino Chiwenga. They have three children together. This is a politician now. Let's talk about age difference. The age difference between her and uh, Chiwenga is 25 years. Because she's only 40 now and Chiwenga is 65. Fine. Um, then what happened is in 2019. Okay. In 2019... Um, her her former husband, who is then uh, who is um what did they say? Who is Shingi Kaondera? Uh, took her to court for fraudulent, like for dissolving their marriage fraudulently, according to him, in 2010. Now the part I don't understand is. How did he wait for 
the whole nine years because apparently she dissolved that marriage in 2010. She was already involved with Mr. Chiwenga and then in 2011 they got married with Mr. Chiwenga and then um, in 2017 Mr. Chiwenga was one of the people that helped um, to that helped to overturn the government of Zimbabwe uh, Mugabe's government uh, he was in the army he was um, the top general of the army or the top what what of the army so he helped overturn Mugabe's government in 2017 and then they started ruling and then he became uh, the deputy uh, president and yeah the vice president in in zimbabwe they call it vice president he became the vice president of zimbabwe from 2017 when nangongwa became the president fine in 2019 he, he fell sick as he fell sick uh, mary the wife uh, had to accompany him to some hospital some undisclosed hospital in south africa they went there he was even airlifted to there Upon arrival there, it is said that she did not want her to go to the hospital anymore. Uh, she wanted them uh, to, to book in a place or they have booked somewhere in a place. And then she wanted to keep him at that place and not um, stick to the initial plan of taking him to the hospital. After some uh, influence by the the security and everybody she finally allowed him to be taken to the hospital while he was still in hospital it is said that uh, she ended up um removing the 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 iv drip the intravenous drip that was put there i don't know what else he did she did two she's accused of doing two things and then she's accused of trying to kill him because she removed that drip and she i don't know she switched whatever machine and then in an effort to kill him um is that true i don't know that's for you to judge now he got sick later on she also got sick she was never trusted after that incident she was kept away from uh, mr chiwenga and then in the very same 2019 and then she was accused of uh, trying to uplift or trying to step up their marriage contract because apparently in 2011 when they got married um they they did not sign under civil marriage they married under customary law under zimbabwean customary law so zimbabwean customary law uh, the woman doesn't get much when uh, in case of divorce or in case of death but civil marriage is the one that guarantees a woman to get a uh, most part of the assets of the man in case of um uh, divorce or in the event of death now she was accused of taking advantage of him while he was in that condition of being very sick for changing their customary marriage to civil marriage it is said that he had signed some affidavit to say the husband had agreed that she she steps up the marriage from customary to civil and then it later on appeared when Mr. Chiwenga got better that mm -mm, he doesn't know that or he claims he doesn't know that. So as a result, a um, uh, case of fraud was opened for her. I think in the very same year, she uh, took out some money, a lot of money. How do I know it's a lot of money? It's because uh, she took the money to South African bank account. That money was enough to buy her a house and it's said to be a, in a very expensive house. And it also was enough to buy her 
two luxurious cars. But then she claims that money was for uh, the things that she wanted, that she ordered, that were to be delivered to her. Now, another case was opened for her for money laundering. And then was the other case? It's that attempted murder. Oh, oh, yes. It's at yes, there are three cases against her. It's attempted murder. It is um, the fraud with the marriage certificate. And remember, it will be the second time for her being accused of fondling or like tempering with a marriage things because the husband as well opened a case that she divorced him without him knowing in 2010. So now again, she is accused of now she tried to over uh, to step up the marriage from customary marriage to um, a civil marriage. So you, you can see that now she is very, very uh, untrusted in Zimbabwe and she's not trusted in the Zimbabwean courts. She is on bail, of course, but only because she is sick. She also got sick. It got worse. It got worse. It started with her um, at some ceremony being uh, seen with a swollen hand. And then that hand got worse. The hand got worse. The hand got worse. And remember, uh, apparently she's got money. She still has got money. Remember, she's got money even in South African accounts. Now, here's what, here was, was her problem. She wanted to go outside the country to go seek for medical help because uh, Zimbabwe, uh, the doctors are not treating her according to how she, she should be treated according to her. Uh, she wanted better health care outside the country of Zimbabwe. And the government was like, you are going nowhere. You are going nowhere. Now she felt she was treated badly. Was she treated badly? I don't know. But she was. She is deteriorating. She got deteriorating um, from just a stolen hand to a point where she was so sick. At one stage, um, they had to go to court on her court appearance. As she was stepping out of the court, she collapsed right in front of the court. It was so bad. Like, it's, it's, it's unsightly. It's very bad. And... Man, the, the case is, is, is really it's, it's traumatizing. It was traumatizing to me. Um, reading all those things that she went to, that she went through, it's, so, it's not nice at all. Now, um, it got to a point where her arm had to be cut. Her arm had to be amputated. Because the doctors there could not um, treat her. She has a symptom. Uh, she has an illness that affects all her limbs. All her, her arms and both her feet. Uh, you can see at this picture that I'll put up here. Um, all her feet and her, her, her arms are not okay. But one arm is worse than... Than the, all, all the other limbs. So as a result. A, an intention by the doctors. To remove that hand. That is worse. Uh, she refused. And later on. Um, like as of yesterday. She, it was cut off. Uh, by the time I get to. Get hold of her story. It was because her hand was cut off. And so when I read the title, it touched me that what did this woman do to get such a bad treatment from the Zimbabwean government? Because her hand is cut off. She's on a hospital bed. She's on bail. So I was like, why is she on bail? So the friend answered me that uh -uh, uh, it's like she, she is accused of trying to, to kill the husband. 
now that is i'm like what so i i wonder how can a life of a person turn like that so i'm thinking of the woman the first woman apparently mr constantino chiwenga had a wife whom he divorced in 2010 when he was now involved with um mary mary being the young blood that was 25 years younger obviously the first wife cannot be 25 years younger so he saw this young thing that was a, a model that was she's tall she's beautiful she's gorgeous and he thought this is the best wife they had three children together mary has five children is the here is another interesting story uh mr chiwenga married mary mary mbaiwa for listen to this forty seven thousand u.s dollars not zimbabwean dollars u.s dollars and when was this in 2010 in 2010, Mr. Shiwenga uh, married uh, Mary Mbaiwa for 47,000 US dollars in 2011. In 2011, 47,000 US dollars. That time imagine the poverty that was was in zimbabwe at that time this guy had forty seven thousand dollars to marry a wife a model guess when he wanted to divorce her how much he gave her he even sent a person i didn't know that in 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 zimbabwe when you are married in customary marriage to a person, you don't have to go to court to divorce them. You can just send someone with a money, a divorce money. Uh, let me check what is it called, divorce money in Zimbabwe. All right, in Zimbabwe, when a person divorces um, a wife, they... I, they give them what they call Giburo. So, in Zimbabwe, when a man divorces a wife, they don't have to go. No. In Zimbabwe, when a man has married a wife under customary law, they don't have to go to court to divorce them. They can just uh, accumulate some money send someone to go give them that money is called kuburo so uh this mr chwenga in 2019 he sent someone some general in in the army then he sent him with a hundred one hundred us dollars to go and give mary and tell him thank you we are divorced Imagine you were you were brought into a family for forty seven thousand US dollars. When you are now taken out of that family, you are taken out for hundred, only one hundred US dollars. So Mary tried to fight that and say no, uh, the Gubro was small. In, in the High Court of Zimbabwe, said no, you've got your Gubro, so sorry. You are divorced. So she cannot get anything. Like this story has got so many. Guys. I don't even know. I don't want to judge. My problem is I don't want to judge. Because like I've got a lot of things. That I can complain about. Like why is this this like this? Why is this like this? Now particularly because this story. Is even for it's our neighbors. Yes but then it's another country. So I cannot judge like maybe I would have more say in the things that are happening in South Africa. But um, a lot of this 
has landed her a raw deal from the Zimbabwean government. I suspect the influence of the Zimbabwean government has um, influenced her treatment. She's treated badly this way because of um, that uh, she's no longer needed now. She's even accused of trying to, to kill um, their, their, their honorable Chwenga. So this is bad. It is bad. But then you'd find stories of people that say like, yeah, the chicken have come home to roost. Because I saw something like that. Let me see. I saw something like, yeah, the, ch the chickens have come home to roost. Let me just read this part. High Court Judge Justice Owen Tagu ruled Mary Mbaiwa, uh, Mubaiwa's marriage to Constantino Chiwenga was over because he was legal, he legally divorced her. He ruled that Chiwenga legally divorced her when he sent a retired Lieutenant General Anselm Sanyatwe to give her 100 US dollars as a divorce token, also known as Guburo in Shona. The High Court ruling came after Mubaiwa challenged Chiwenga's divorce petition, filed in December 2019. In her response, Mary insisted that their customary marriage still subsist subsisted because Chiwenga failed to follow cultural protocol to enable him to terminate the marriage. She further argued that uh, she never got Gupuro because of this failure to follow protocol. She, however, conceded that Chiwenga sent retired Lieutenant General Anselm Sanyadwe to her to give her 100 US dollars as a divorce token. She further argued that she refused to accept the Kuburo because it was in United States dollars and not the local currency. But when she was married for 47 US dollars, she did not complain. Her family did not complain about the United States dollars. Now, when it's divorce, now she's complaining that now it is United States dollars. She got a raw deal, shame. If I have to say so, she got a raw deal. But getting a raw deal out of a man, an old man, for, for that matter. A man that's old enough to be your father. And this plays out so many times. So many women all over the world are getting a raw deal the minute uh, the relationships they are in get soured. If the relationship gets soured, just know that you are in serious trouble. Now, I, I searched, man, I searched to a point where I even got a video of him, her, her attorney where she was uh, interviewed. I want you to watch that interview uh, and listen to yourself how much of a raw deal she got. We're now joined by Zimbabwean human rights lawyer and representative for Mary Mbaiwa, Beatrice Mtetwa. Ms. Mtetwa, good morning. Finally, glad to have you on the line this morning. Certainly a, a number morning. of uh, allegations that have been leveled against your client. But first, let's talk about her health at the moment. How is uh, Mary Mbaiwa doing? Uh, she has been unwell long before she was arrested. I think most people are aware that while her husband was being treated prior to her arrest, she also was under treatment because she had been in, in the bomb blast that happened in Bulawayo in 2018, and she, she was one of those who were injured. And at the time that she was married to the VP, of course, she was allowed to go outside for medical treatment. And she actually was under a specialist uh, a, a, a doctor in South Africa, Mr. Van Yeden, at the time of her arrest. So it is an open secret that she was under medical attention 
and being treated before she was arrested. And it boggles the mind why she cannot continue receiving that treatment whilst her husband is able to receive that treatment, to travel outside the country to receive that treatment. Uh, and, and she has deteriorated to a point where the doctors have said, we cannot save the right forearm, it has to be amputated. And this was said right at the outset in 2020 in court when we sought permission for her to go and be treated in, in South Africa. The court was told that if she does not get the specialist treatment, she risks having her arm amputated. Now, we've seen several visuals, uh, certainly, and, and, and images. Um, videos included where Mary Baiwa has been seen at, at a hospital, or rather at the courts, um, on a stretcher bed, uh, I think confirming her state. So she's, it appears, to be forced to attend uh, court hearings in that state. Now, what has the court's justification been for denying her permission to leave the country to seek treatment? Is she considered a flight risk? Well, the thinking is that if she goes out of the country, she will not come back, which uh, uh, really is strange because I've had many, many clients who are not half as ill as she is, who've been able to go to South Africa and elsewhere for medical attention, and they have come back. And I don't see why she wouldn't come back, particularly because the, the charges against her are very weak. Yes, we are aware that uh, the, 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 this is against a powerful man in the country, but the bottom line is the charges are very weak. Uh, she may very well get uh, convicted in the lower courts, but her chances of succeeding in the superior courts are extremely high because the, the evidence that has been laid so far in the cases where she has gone to court is so weak that if she was not who she was, she most definitely would never even have been put on her defense. Well, there are a number of charges that uh, I'd like you to, to talk us through if you can. One of those is uh, she's being tried for allegedly breaching the Marriages Act. The VP in his defense said he was too ill to have uh, signed uh, papers uh, officializing the, the marriage, if you will. Um, she's allegedly tried to have killed her former husband while he was in a hospital in, in South Africa. And she also faces charges of fraud and uh, money laundering. That's correct. Uh, the trial on the alleged uh, 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 marriage uh, uh, case has been ongoing. And uh, the main witness uh, who was supposed to come in and say that she actually did that came and said the exact opposite. And we are waiting to see how the court will find uh, on that. Uh, the allegation that she tried to kill him in South Africa has not been pursued to date. And, uh, you know, the vice president was under guard 24-7 for a start. Secondly, the, the, the hospital where he was at has CCTV. And uh, we have asked for that CCTV footage to show that, uh, indeed, she did try to do that because there would be evidence of it. And it has uh, actually not been forthcoming. Uh, there are other allegations sorry, of sorry, money laundering. Sorry, Ms. Chetwa, if, if you'd allow me to, to come in there. I'd imagine that uh, if Meryn Baiwa went in to see her husband uh, in the room, that she'd be allowed to do that, and that would not be uh, under, under guard. And would there be CC, CCTVs in the actual ward or in the actual room? Well, the hospital says there is, uh, but uh, the doctors would be able to say so, how she tried to kill him. Uh, because the doctors would be able to say that, oh, there was this, uh, 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 you know, uh, connection that she took out. They would say how it, it is alleged she tried to kill him. We have not had that. And that allegation has not been pursued as we speak, uh, precisely because it is just an allegation that's meant to throw things at her. Uh, more to justify the treatment that she is now receiving than because there is actually evidence that she tried to kill him. She had been with him in many other hospitals. She was with him at home. Why would she wait to go and try and kill him in South Africa when she could easily have put a pillow uh, over his face at home? Why would she have done that? The mind boggles why she would 
risk doing it in South Africa when she could easily do it in her bedroom at home? Well, I suppose if I was to answer that, I'd suggest that if she did it in a home, it would be pretty obvious uh, who would have done it. But uh, what I suppose the, the next question that uh, we would like to get from you is certainly, is the judiciary, in your opinion, in Zimbabwe uh, partial, if you will, or, or um, uh, partisan? And the reason I ask is obviously because you've given us examples, uh, not in detail, of some of your clients who've been allowed to leave the country and seek medical treatment. <coughs> Excuse me. In your mind, do you feel that the VP has a role to play in her inability to leave the country and seek treatment? Well, the judiciary and the NPA are supposed to be impartial and independent. They are not supposed to take instructions from anybody. But uh, we have seen, for instance, in the trial related to the marriage, that uh, the vice president's lawyers, who ought to have nothing to do with the criminal prosecution, because that ought to be between the state and the accused, have been coming to court religiously and they do give instructions to the prosecution. On Monday, for instance, when we, we, we came to report that she, she had been hospitalized the night before, the vice president's private lawyers were there. They took the chief prosecutor out of the courtroom to speak to him. So there can be no question that the identity of the complainant in this case has played a large role in how they cases against Mary have, uh, have uh, progressed. There can be no question that even where the vice president might not say to judicial officers do X, Y, there is the fear that it is expected that I might find in a certain way. We know that the impartiality and independence uh, of the judiciary, particularly at the magistrate's court level, is severely compromised, and we are able to say this because there's just a coterie of magistrates who get given certain cases, and you can predict their findings with, with your eyes closed because they are trusted to do what is expected of them. Uh, this is Thank you so much. Remember to subscribe, share, like, leave a comment in the comment section, and... Set the notification bell. Bye-bye.